Okay, so quick update. Um, I made some progress on the board, and uh, with some help from Ron from uh, John's Arcade Forums, he's in the chat uh, the shop box and uh, hangs out in there. So he watched the video and uh, pointed me in the right direction of where to go next. Uh, when I was looking, <clears throat> I was working late, and when I was looking at the particular por portion of the schematic up here, I was trying to figure out what was going on. I had the I had the data flow backwards. Um, the the output was actually coming out. I, I thought a I thought I was getting input a pin or in and out, out out of another, and I had it backwards. What was going on is uh, off this 16 VF over here. Uh, pin 12 is the output, and then the uh, the what's coming in here is actually the input. And this is a data bus. So 16 VF is actually tied to more than one location. And that's why you can see it kind of extends and goes all over the place. Um, not only is it here off of these particular uh, trio of chips of these 157s, but it's also down here, which is what I was probing for where we started, uh, based off of the Mike's Arcade information. We were looking at these uh, 283 chips, and we saw that one of the legs weren't, weren't pulsing, and so we followed it back here, and I thought it was... Uh, due to uh, this particular set of chips or a chip being bad here, but that wasn't the case. He he was just exhibiting the same uh, condition as the 283s because he also had no input on uh, the 16VF uh, address, uh, a particular address part of the address bus. Uh, so if you actually follow this line and go around the schematic, uh, what it actually ends up going to is a location over here. And you can see at this particular part of the board, there's a series of uh, some uh, logic chips here, as well as these LS-175s. And then these counter chips up here, which are these LS-163 slash 161s. And these guys just do counter in increments. And then down below here is actually where, uh, from their output, is pushed to this one of these uh, logic chips here, uh, which is going to be an LS, I think, 86. And uh, from these logic chips, you'll you'll have an output that goes to each of the individual address lines of this di of this particular address bus. And right here we have these 16 VF. So that's actually where this is this address particular line of the bus is being driven. So this is where the the inflow of data is going to start from into 16 VF. And this will extend to both this portion of the board over here <coughs> uh, for these 157s as well as the 283s. So um, this is kind of the starting point for this for this uh, particular point. And, they, and the issue here is that we've got a large circuit that we that I had to trace to figure out um, where where this where this actually uh, sources from. So uh, to get to that, I actually had to go to the other. So this is the four board stack. I'm, I've been working on the video board, which is I'm, I've got a video problem working on the video board. But um, a lot of the uh, core functions come from this clock board. On the two board stack, the clock board and the video board are one, but on the clock board, to find where the uh, the driver was is actually was over here. And I and I probed around. I, I found uh, the the here's the logic chips and then uh, the counters and then the 157, all right here. And these guys are doing their job. I checked everything out up here. It was all good. Um, once I determined that these were doing and driving what they were supposed to, what that was telling me was that the information that was coming out of this, uh, I think it's this one right here, um, I think, I'd have to go back and double check, it's either this guy or this guy, but, because <clears throat> there's, there's uh, several outputs on these guys, but what was being produced here um, wasn't making it back to this board or wasn't making it back to the bus for 16F on this board. So what I had to do was I just turned everything off and just went step by step uh, checking continuity uh, from this chip going back and making sure that I could get through the ribbon cable, um, get to the ribbon cable, get through the ribbon cable back to the other side of the board and then find out where things were broken on this board. And lo and behold, I actually found a trace that was broken. And um, as you can see, I added a jumper uh, which goes from, well now you, hold on, let me turn on the light real quick. Okay, there we go. So here we go. Um, so most most of everything was intact. The the uh, continuity all the way to the ribbon cable uh, to here was good. Um, also, we had continuity between the 283 chip and the uh, the 157 down here. So the the that's why when I would push 
when I bridged these connections, uh, bits were actually able to get to 283. <clears throat> so it was actually just, it was like cross-talking back over to 283 and kind of arbitrarily filling that 16VF address bus, which is kind of what gave me the effect I was looking for. Um, but that, that wasn't everything I needed. I wasn't getting the right signals into that bus. So, uh, and then plus it was feeding it back to the same chip, which is that's not going to help me. Uh, so what we needed to do was uh, repair the trace and complete the bus. So uh, that's what I did here, which I tied in here and then back down over here. And this, I'll probably clean this up a little bit better. It's okay. It, it, it does the job it needs to do. Um, but I think I could do a little bit better job. I just wanted to get it together and uh, see if it gave me what I needed. So, um, yeah, so I'll, we'll go ahead and take a look at the uh, the changes here in just a minute. I've also got, um, I'm redoing some EEPROMs here. I'll talk to the guys again, and I, I was certain that I could, I figured there had to be a way to use the 2732s in these sockets because they had the same pinout, they used the same uh, voltages. Um, I was just missing one very important piece of how to use a 2732 inside of a socket where the CPU is expecting to see a 2716 or to address or pull ad addressing information from 2716 and uh, if you hang on with me guys I'll talk about that in just a second okay so I'm over at my EEPROM burning station I just burned one ROM and uh, the program operation was successful so it's written to the the ROM, but let me show you what I did with this 2732. So on the Donkey Kong, there's a specific pin of the 27, there's a pin difference between the 2716 and 2732, and it's only one pin. And that's the addition of this address pin, and it's the uh, this pin 11. So a 2716 does not have a address 11. So what you have to do is, <clears throat> Depending on what the board's doing, if that particular pin is held high or low, that's going to tell you where you actually want to place the data inside the chip. On this one, since it's held high, we want to put the data at the bottom part of the chip. So what I did was I told my uh, EEPROM programmer to start writing data to the chip at uh, the point of 800, or the value of 800. So at this particular memory block, that's where it started writing data. So the first, the first half of the chip is actually blank, and the second half of the chip has data. I hope this works. Um, I haven't tested it, so <laughs> this is what I'm going off of. So I've done one, so let's go ahead and grab the other one out of the eraser, and uh, I'll stick it into the burner, and we'll get it started. So let me, let me do that real quick. Okay, so I put my other chip into the EEPROM burner here, and uh, ready to get it burned, but I'm going to go ahead and just double-check a few things. I've read the buffer. It looks like it's blank. I'm going to do a blank check real quick. I'll get this goofy message. So it, it is blank. So what I need to do is open up my file that I need to burn to it. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start instead of uh, at the beginning of the chip, I'm going to start at 800. And I'll just go ahead and say, yep, load that up. Say OK. So my buffer, as I scroll down here, the second half of the chip is, or the second half of the buffer of the this uh, 32k uh, buffer space is going to be filled with the data that I want. So that's what that looks like, and so that means it's ready to burn. So I'll go ahead and flip back over here and tell it to program. So yes, please do, and there it goes programming the chip. So. We'll let that run, uh, and I'll come back, and uh, we'll go ahead and get it going. Let me go ahead and uh, I'll go back over to the board set real here, and I'll show you what uh, why we're doing what we're doing. But uh, hold on one second. Okay, so just to recap real quick, uh, if you were to ha I don't have the board on right now, but if it was on and you took your probe and you probe the fourth pin here, which is the address 11 pin of this particular EEPROM, and depending on the board of which or whatever board set or whatever. Uh, Whatever the board is delivering here is going to determine what uh, address blocks you set your programming to. You could put them on both if you wanted to to, to cover your bases. I'm just I'm so, I'm doing uh, just the, the lower half just because I know it, since this is tied to high or five volts, then I need to put the programming logic at the latter half of the chip. So if it were actually uh, grounded or or zero uh, voltage at this particular pin then I'd want it at the first half of the chip. And that's all we're doing. So 
I'm going to put the code at the bottom half of the chip since it's holding it high at this location on uh, this particular pin. So it should read from that uh, bottom half registry of the EEPROM. So, anywho, we'll go ahead and get these socketed up and turn it back on and hopefully we will have Donkey Kong where we want it. But uh, hang tight guys, let's get these chips back in their sockets. Okay, I didn't even verify this chip when I pulled it. I don't even know if it's written properly, so who knows? Let's just turn it on and find out. If I need to redo it, I'll redo it. That sounded strange. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> oh, yeah, it's sweet. Are you kidding me? Oh, this feels good, I gotta say. Um, yeah, look at that. Man, I was gonna I was about to buy a new EEPROM burner just to get these uh these EEPROMs burning. Now it's working. So screw the 2716s, man. Uh that was weird. <laughs> Some weird glitching on the monitor there. Um Man, yeah, this is awesome. So I gotta play this thing. <laughs> I gotta put this board back together and uh, I gotta. I think I need to play it. I'm gonna watch it for a little while, check this either side. I think there's a couple other glitches that's going on, so I may need to clean those up. But uh, yeah, this is a lot better, man. A lot better than what it was. So, anyway, thanks to all the guys on John's Arcade Forum, the shout box. Uh, Ian Catalog was helping out, uh, Ron was helping out, uh, I think Charles was helping out. Yeah, so. All the guys in there, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Dude, did you see that? Oh, man. We got more issues. I'll keep hunting these issues down and fixing them. That looks like a, uh, that looks like a monitor issue. I'm not sure. Okay, well, I think I'll wrap this one up for now. And uh, as I keep finding issues, uh, we'll come back and we'll address them together. All right, thanks, guys.